scoreboard. Brought to you by Hardee's and by Piggly Wiggly. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to the WTOC High School Football Scoreboard Show. I'm Rick Snow with Mitch Glicken, and uh, we are here for the first round of the playoffs, Mitch. And boy, what a what a first round. That's right, Rick. You know, this is what this is what everyone plays high school football for. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, you, you play for a learning and growing experience, but when you go through the pain and sweat of two a days when it's 90 to 100 degrees, you want to make the postseason, and the party started tonight. The stages of the football season, all those August two a days, and then you go through the first few games, then you get to your region games, and now the playoffs. And uh, big game, a rematch of the game just three weeks ago that was played over in Statesboro with the Blue Devils taking on Effingham County. That one was won by the Blue Devils, and our Ken Greiner was up in Springfield tonight for the rematch. And what kind of rematch was it, Ken? What kind of rematch was it? Well, this one was a much tighter game than the first time around. You may recall earlier this year when Statesboro beat Effingham County handily 24-14 to up in Statesboro. Well, Effingham folks think it's a little different this time around. Let's take you right on up just outside of Springfield, show you what I'm talking about. Welcome to the House of Pain in Springfield, Georgia. The Rebels are at home. I believe it's going to make a difference after Effingham blocks a punt in the first quarter. To set the tone here is the next play. Chris Allen puts Effingham up 7 to nothing as he goes in untouched. 9.32, second quarter. Ball just inches out. Leroy Lipsy with the sneak in. 7-7 seven, seven tie. Both defenses played well tonight. That was the difference here. Second half D here. Paul Conley of Effingham stops Todd Stewart cold on the option. Next play, though, keep your eye on number 23, Leroy Lipsy. Out of the backfield. Yeah, that's what both coaches were afraid of. The big play. That's the big play for Statesboro. They take a 14-7 lead. Late in the game. Less than two minutes left. Statesboro has already stopped Deffingham. They're just running the clock out. Maybe a first down. And they get the fumble. Next play, Chris Allen for the Rebels goes to Terry Griffin with 37 seconds on the clock. 14-13 Statesboro. Five-yard penalty. Puts the ball back to the eight-yard line. They still go for two. Chris Allen back to pass. Chad Parrish breaks it up, seals the win. Statesboro is your winner tonight and advances with the 14-13 win over Effingham County. And this was a tremendous ball game. You know, a lot of people started leaving. I think the Georgia-Florida game uh, years past. People started leaving as soon as Statesboro got the ball back late. But uh, as you see, fumble. Effingham scores. They go for two. Never leave a ball game early. I don't care what's going on. <laughs> what was the reason? Do you know, Ken, for them going for two at that point instead of going for the tie and uh, go going into overtime? Well, I'll tell you, a few good reasons for that, and I'll uh, defend Bob Griffith on this. A lot mm -hmm. of fans are really upset with this. A, block punt early, a block field goal attempt earlier this year. There was a block field goal attempt earlier tonight. Could have blocked it again. That's not a sure thing. They were back on the eight, and that's Statesboro had a chip shot uh, blocked earlier tonight. Secondly, and I'll give you this, the coach on the sidelines, college coach, and of course d different people vary. I'm not going to give you any names here. He said he does not want to get into a shootout in overtime with Todd Stewart. Makes a lot of sense. Stewart, a good passer. You go into penetration, that can make a big difference. Of course, they also had Leroy Lipsy on their side, too. Yeah, Leroy Lipsy makes a big difference. As you, you can tell <laughs> Todd Stewart, Leroy Lipsy, they combined for a big one tonight. And of course, the big play really cost Effingham. Uh, you know, you, that's one of those things, and that's why coaches get paid for what they're doing. They have to make those decisions. They have to answer for them. I really don't see where it's that bad of a move. Most of the time, yes, but I'm looking at two block field goal attempts this year already, and also you go into penetration could be really tough. Go ahead and get the win. You're a hero. You lose. you got to answer questions. So uh, that's why I like doing what I'm doing and not out there coaching. <laughs> All right. Our Ken Griner up in the newsroom. And Mitch, uh, of course, uh, that blocked field goal, that was really one of the differences in their first meeting three weeks ago, a uh, blocked field goal that was returned for a touchdown. Yeah, but in that first meeting, Rick, quite honestly, Statesboro blew Effingham out of that contest. Effingham played him a tight game tonight. Mm -hmm. But let's give the Blue Devils all the credit in the world, yeah. folks. I didn't give them a chance tonight simply because they had to go to Effingham. It's tough to beat a team twice in a single season and off-field distractions. Mm -hmm. Charles Webb somehow got his team regrouped after the whole region matter earlier this week and said, let's forget that, let's win Friday night and move on in the playoffs, and move on they will. And I guess we'll answer the question where they'll be playing. Will it be home 
or will they be moving on? That'll be coming up in just a little while because you were down in Hinesville where that other uh, quad A game was being played, and that was Beach and Bradwell. We'll have those highlights and that score coming up in just a moment. Stay tuned. <laughs> at 99 cents, the only easy choice is where to go. Oh, no. Raisin oat bran muffin and blueberry muffin, only 99 cents also? <laughs> 99 cent breakfast every day, only Hardee's. I didn't think it was possible that uh, once a year treatment would work, but it does. Technician went into every room of the house. They took the switch plates off. They want me at it? They go underneath your stove. These people are talking about the effectiveness of Sears once a year pest control. When that company says that they guarantee, they're for real. I trust Sears. My problem was solved. Once a year is convenient. Sears once a year pest control. It works. No bugs. It's the second big week of the pigs buy one. Get the second one free sale. Get the six ounce bag of Moore's potato chips buy one package. Get the second one free. Buy one jar. Of Mount Olive whole dill pickles. And get the second one free. Or get Kraft Mild shredded cheddar cheese. Buy one, get the second one free. Mmm, Maria cinnamon rolls. Buy one, get one free. Plus get the 15 ounce bottle of Flex shampoo or conditioner. Buy one, get another one free. There are lots more buy one, get one free specials plus other great buys. This week at Piggly Wiggly. here on the WTOC High School Football Scoreboard Show. I'm Rick Snow, and Mitch was down in Hinesville tonight, and uh, big game down there, the Beach Bulldogs. They've uh, played well this season. They've played extremely well this season, as had the Bradwell Tigers have yeah, throughout came the first on strong, four games. Especially late. Throughout the first four games, and Bradwell and Ross New had a completely different mm -hmm. team. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people thought the game of the night would probably be up in Effingham. I don't know if they were right. There was a great game down at Bradwell Institute. Let's head down there. It was welcome to the jungle for the Beach Bulldogs as the Tigers came out hungry, looking to knock off Beach for the second time this season. On the first play of the game, quarterback Salton Cooper pitches. Nobody is there. The coaches of Beach know, and almost knocking me over, the Beach Bulldogs have the ball inside the 10-yard line. Three plays later, misdirection play, quarterback Rodney Brown has it, tosses it to big bad Ben Wilson, four yards in the score, and quickly, Beach has a 7-0 lead over Bradwell. At the end of the first quarter, Warren Mitchell booms this punt. But Aaron Green hauls it in, and watch him. He finds a lane, and this is art, folks. 75 yards. Would not get the touchdown. It was clipping at the 8-yard line, moved the ball to the 23. The beach defense would shut down the Tigers there. And I would come the field goal unit to cut the lead 7-3 when Scott New hit that at the half. Then in the third quarter, Beach, Rodney Brown hits the Ron Ward wide open for a 50-yard strike. This is like the second play of the third quarter, but... On fourth down, Beach goes for it. Ben Wilson fumbles. The Tiger defense holds in the third quarter. The Tigers had it. It had to be third and 35 yards to go. Salton Cooper, look at that hurl. Looked like something out of the NFL. Jeff Boyd streaking for 70 yards on that completion. Crowd going crazy. 
Then it's Johnny Bethany, player of the week last week. That's not Johnny Bethany. <laughs> this is Johnny Bethany. He'll squirt right off tackle into the end zone. They miss the extra point, but they take the lead 9-7. They missed the extra point because of that celebration. They got penalized and were not missing. The Tiger defense was tough. Ben Wilson knocked into reverse by John Bird. Then Salton Cooper. Watch him dance with this ball. Cut in, cut out, cut more to the outside, off to the races for 60 yards on that run. Seven plays later, take a look at the touch on this one. Salton Cooper lost it, Jeff Boyd has it, 16 to seven, and Bradwell goes on to win this one, 16 to seven. They are the region champions. And as you see it, they win the region, Rick. Wow. Statesboro on the road. And let's take a look. Where are they going next week? Take a look at the four quad A scores. And, uh, well, I guess we don't have those. Uh, we, have other we understand LaGrange and Griffin both won, uh, meaning that LaGrange will host Statesboro and Griffin will travel down to uh, Bradwell. Take Bradwell Institute. Next Friday night, Bradwell will be hosting Griffin. Statesboro on the road. Now, Valdosta and range. Warner Robins both got buys in their respective regions, so they didn't have to play. In uh, the other games in those regions, Colquitt County beat Tift County tonight on the road, as a matter of fact, and Northeast Macon over Central Macon by five points. So some big ball games being played all around the state tonight in uh, uh, Quad A football. Sure were. Of course, now we had some big games in single A. We'll have some of those, and we'll have all the scores and the highlights coming up in just a moment. has a great selection of beautiful furs reduced during their holiday sale. With Kirshner's surprise purchase guarantee, if the fur isn't just right, Kirshner's will exchange it after Christmas. So drop a hint. Tell them to go to Kirshner Furs holiday sale and get what you really want for Christmas. Why are more and more small car buyers choosing Mercury Tracer? Could be Tracer is one of the roomiest cars in its class. Could be its impressive ride and handling. Or it could be this. Now get air conditioning and automatic transmission at no charge on Tracer with package 576R. Mercury Tracer, out to be America's best small car value for a lot of reasons, especially this. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer today. You know, reading to kids is important. That's why BP is offering a classic collection of Winnie the Pooh children's books. Read this one next. This one too? Sure. These charming tales have been delighting families for generations. There's six hard-covered books, each one just 89 cents with every fill-up of BP gasoline, plus a free collector's case. Okay, who was first? Me, 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 me. I had to ask. The Winnie the Pooh collection, now at BP. BP, on the move. Jeopardy! It's as much fun as you think. Weeknights at 7.30. High School Football Scoreboard, brought to you by Hardee's and by Piggly Wiggly. And a good
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the final WTOC High School football scoreboard show of the season. I'm Rick Snow, and this is Mitch Glicken. And Mitch, seems like we just started the first show. Rick, I'm still sweating from two a days. I have, <laughs> I, I cannot believe. The entire regular season has gone by, and now we're in the second round of the playoffs, the first round of the state playoffs, mm -hmm. and some very big games tonight. Yeah, and uh, there are a couple of surprises. You see the full moon over my shoulder there and, uh, and everything. And, you know, it's just a, been a great night for football, a couple of disappointments, but, gee, a, a nice surprise. And uh, uh, later on in the show, we're going to introduce you to our WTOC High School Football uh, Offensive Lineman of the Year and also our Player of the Year, which yeah. was introduced earlier in the week. But those linemen, you know, they, they give very little credit, I and know. that's why we take a lot of pride in, in giving that award. But let's get things rolling, Rick, right. in the playoffs. Uh, a big game in Metter where things weren't better at the beginning of the year. They started yes. off terrible. They had a new offense. They went back what it brought them there. Mm -hmm. They made it all the way to the playoffs, haven't lost since. Back to that I formation. That's right. So let's head out to Metter where things couldn't be any better these days. The Tigers come out fired up to take on the Warriors of Wilkinson County. Both teams have a lot going on in this game. Wilkinson County scores first. As we see the kickoff, and the cheerleaders having a good time in Metter. Wilkinson gets on the board. Quarterback Billy Matthews hands off to Ortego Todd, who fights his way in. 7-0, the Tigers trail early. Metter head coach John Glatt wanted to see his team get it in. Quarterback Barry Booth hands it off to Juan Johnson, who takes it in for the score. The crowd loved it. The extra point, though, unfortunately, is no good. 7-6, Wilkinson County. The Tigers score again with this long pass from Booth to Flando Hobbs. Yes, he's got it. The Tigers go for two. Booth's pass is knocked away, but it's 12-7. Metter has the lead, which is over two minutes left in the half. The Warriors, Wilkinson County, score again. Todd does the honors once more. The extra point is good. 14-12 Wilkinson over Metter. As Wilkinson goes on to defeat the Tigers tonight, 35 to 20, and in that game uh, they looked good early, and unfortunately Wilkinson proved too much mm -hmm. for the Metter Tigers. There you saw already uh, Trutland County losing at Lincoln County. Lincoln County. That's their 42nd consecutive victory. They've won six of the last seven state championships in single A, and <laughs> Trutland County gave them a whale of a battle tonight. Rick, I really think Lincoln County should have to play college football. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't no single A team. At least are, quad A, yeah, right? They're, they're the class of the state in uh, single A. They would give plenty of quad A teams a run for their money. Also in uh, single A tonight, it was Clinch County over Calhoun County. We haven't heard yet from uh, Charlton County and Miller County as yet. But uh, maybe we will before the show is over. And we'll be back with more here on the WTOC High School Football Scoreboard Show as a crowd cheers at the stadium. And we'll be back. We'll introduce you to our Lineman of the Year in just a moment. <laughs> Huh? Ooh, made from scratch biscuit with sausage. That's the one I want. Wait a second. The pancakes look good, too. Hold it. The biscuits and gravy. I didn't see those. Or, or hot cinnamon raisin biscuits. Ooh, sausage. 99. Wait, go back. Can I help you? With all this at 99 cents, the only easy choice is where to go. Oh, no. Raisin oat bran muffin and blueberry muffin. Only 99 cents also. <laughs> 99 cent breakfast every day. Only Hardee's. Save over $4 on huge specials at the Pig this week, like Stokely Vegetables. Get four cans for just a dollar and save a dollar twenty. In our Fresh Advantage Produce Department, pick up some fresh, crisp celery. 29 cents a stalk with coupons, save 30 cents. Get a free pie for the holidays. Banquet pumpkin pie, free with coupons, save a dollar nine. In the deli, get our fresh baked loaf of French bread, only 99 cents with coupons, save a dollar. And save 70 cents on Piggly Wiggly Sausage. The one pound package, just 99 cents with coupon. Save over $4 this week at Piggly Wiggly. Make it happen with Toyota today. Toyota's making deals away. Toyota, number one 
truck line in customer satisfaction. Make it happen! And we'll do what it takes with Make It Happen deals, like this hot SRX 4 truck, with over $600 in option package savings, plus $1,000 factory to dealer incentives, you could save $1,600. Make it happen for you! Hurry, offer ends December 3rd. Let's welcome the Savannah Mall panel of experts. Hey kids, what's the neatest thing about Savannah Mall during the holidays? They have the real Santa and real life robot dinosaurs. And what about the wonderful decorations, fun places to eat, and zillions of stores? The real Santa will be there from the North Pole. You can get your picture with Santa and Santa rides the dinosaurs. There you have it, the real Santa Claus, robot dinosaurs, and a whole lot more, only at Savannah Mall. Well, back here on the WTOC High School Football Scoreboard Show, we go on to Quad A. And a big game down in Hinesville tonight. Bradwell Institute was playing Noonan, and our Ken Greiner was down there. And Ken, uh, quite a ball game tonight. Quite a ball game indeed. You know, I've been coming down to Bradwell now quite some time. It seems like the last three weeks have been down here because this is where the big game has been. And yes, indeed, it was quite a ball game against Noonan tonight. Let's take you out and take a look at the highlights from Hinesville. Bradwell definitely came out to play in this one. They are ready. They're still feeling the winds of Statesboro a couple of weeks ago. First play, they show they're ready. A little slant in from Sultan Cooper to Allen White. Pick up the first down. They're ready to play. Seven plays later, little Johnny Bethan. Two-yard run. Bradwell takes a 7 to nothing lead in the first quarter. Noonan completes a nine-play drive. This ties the game to seven of pieces. Honeywood scores from four yards out. Proof that great things do come in small packages. Watch a little Bethany run over. Nate Russell. Boom! Get out of my way. Gets hit out of bounds. Get back on 15 yards of that as well. With 140 left in the half, Sultan Cooper airs it out to Johnny Gregg. Touchdown Bradwell. To take the 14-7 lead in at halftime. Second half. Comes back out and Noonan came ready to play. Derek Stegel, quarterback, great athlete here, goes to work. Bootleg right, 21 yards out, untouched. We're all tied up at 14 apiece. Fourth quarter, Bradwell has the ball on the one. Cooper fakes up the middle, keeps it, runs around for the 21 to 14 Bradwell lead. Late in the fourth quarter, Noonan is driving. Bradwell's D is tough though. Danny Evans stacks Stegel. Nowhere to run there for the big Noonan kick. This is a big play here too. Fourth down, Noonan on the four yard line. Incomplete pass, and the Tigers take over. With five seconds left on the clock, Cooper decides to take the safety. Bradwell comes up with a big win, winning its 21-16 to the final. Of course, talked to the Bradwell coaches after the game and said, hey, you guys are going to keep surprising people until you get to the finals. And they say, that's all right with us. <laughs> yeah, right. now, do they play a home game next week? They are at home. I've been so wrapped up in this game, though, I'm going to have to depend on you two guys Cold to find quit. out who won the Warner Robins game. Well, yeah. Cold Quit County won that one. Well, and Bradwell is going to be in the jungle as well. Maybe they'll be playing a little Guns N' Roses down here again. Welcome to the jungle because it's worked for him. Late in the season for him so far. All right, our Ken Griner, who was at the ball game down in Hinesville, we apologize for the uh, noisy audio there. Yeah, but, Kenny uh, had to pull over on I-95 down there near Richmond Hill, mm -hmm. do it right out of the truck so we could get you those highlights in time. Wanted to stay for that whole game because it came down mm -hmm. in the last five seconds. And, and what a great job Ross knew and his brand-new Bradwell Tigers have done. They got off to a horrible start, mm -hmm. had a complicated offense, Very simplified complicated. it just a little bit. And look what the Tigers have done. They've now won, I believe it's seven of the last eight, number three in the mm -hmm. Super 11, deservedly show, and uh, one of the best teams in our area, and congratulations to them for moving on. Yeah, they've really improved over the uh, year, uh, and this is something that complicated offense he had at the beginning of the year. That's something he might be able to build on in the future as he has those players for a longer period of time. Unfortunately, I think he's going to lose Salton Cooper next year, and when you have a quarterback of his ability... It's going to hurt a little bit, but Bradwell right now, let's not worry about next year. Let's worry about next week. Next week, and we'll, let's show you the scores and show you who they're going to play. Uh, one other score, uh, mm. Statesboro scoring three times in the final minutes. Uh -huh. Almost pulled that one out. They scored three touchdowns late in that ball game, but they lost to LaGrange 33-20. to 20. Valdosta, <laughs> well, 
what else is new. They Move continue on. to win, <laughs> and uh, they they will meet uh, LaGrange next week. Colquitt County shutting out Warner Robins on the road, and will be at Bradwell in Hinesville next Friday night. It what a game that should yeah. be. Colquitt at uh, Bradwell, and if they can beat Warner Robins there, you know what kind of team they are to beat Warner Robins on the road. Uh, Colquitt, very good. Would you say they might have a good defense? I'd say they must have an excellent defense to <laughs> yeah. shut down Warner Robins' high-powered offense. And when you have a team like that, what, what do you need? You need an offensive lineman, right? You need an offensive lineman. You know, it is the most under-glamorized position on the field, yet if you ask any coach, it is the most important mm -hmm. position on the field. An offensive line that will open the holes, and then you hear about the Tony Grants of years past and, and Leroy Lipsy this year. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have an offensive lineman, it doesn't make any difference. They don't go anywhere, which is why we present a WTOC Offensive Lineman of the Year Award, and we introduce you to this year's winner. We're here today at Effingham County High School in Springfield to present the Offensive Lineman of the Year Award from WTOC. And uh, offensive linemen, they're players who rarely get recognition, but uh, Dusty Ziegler, a lot of people have noticed you. Uh, congratulations uh, for being the WTOC Offensive Lineman of the Year. And talked to a lot of people about you, and a lot of people said he's the toughest guy we've ever run up against. Well, thank you, first of all. But we have a great team, and I get good recognition because of that. And I try hard, and the other players try hard, and we just do our job. Now, offensive linemen don't get much recognition uh, unless you do something wrong, of course. Uh, is that difficult to adjust to mentally? Not really. You just forget about it and mm -hmm. make up for it on the next play. Ziegler is an imposing figure. Stands 6'6", six, six, weighs 250 pounds, and when he comes up to the line of scrimmage, he probably scares the defensive line to death. And you know he's very unusual in that he has always enjoyed playing the offensive line. Oh, yeah. I love to do that. I love to hit people. <laughs> well, one thing about Dusty, he was always a natural blocker. He was a guy that uh, that uh, just did things just sort of naturally. Of course, he's gotten a lot better. And, uh, the main thing is he's gotten uh, he worked hard in the weight room and gotten bigger and stronger. Now, you called him a natural blocker. You run up against many natural blockers? You really don't. And really, it's I think it's probably the hardest position to play in football is offensive line blocking. You're doing things that are, are real uh, uh, not natural to do as far as uh, getting down low and moving your feet and, and uh, sticking your head in the middle of somebody. And it uh, just doesn't come real naturally. And, and Dusty, just uh, he's always just done a great job of it. What's in the future for you now? Try and go on to college. Mm -hmm. Give it all I got. See what happens. Imagine you're getting a lot of offers right now. It's getting kind of confusing. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. A lot of good schools after you? A lot of great schools. A lot of great schools. Is there any one in particular uh, that you have maybe always thought you'd like to attend? FSU or Notre Dame. I'm thinking hard about them. Dusty Ziegler. Quite what a, a young man. What a player. And, and the question now, Rick, is who will you be blocking for next year? Will it be Casey Weldon or will it be Rick Meyer? Hmm. <laughs> Interesting thought. And, and those case, are his choices, that's too, right. as he said. And in case you don't know who those guys play for, we're talking about Florida State, the number one team in the country right now. Uh, no, formerly. Oh, yeah, excuse yeah, me. Number three now. But maybe the, number, maybe the national champs. Or Notre Dame. Not bad schools. Not bad. And, uh, of course, a lot of other schools are still trying to talk them into going to their uh, facilities. I'm sure the dogs would love to see him come to Athens. I think anybody would, because uh, <laughs> he can block and he enjoys it. We'll be back. We have more here on the WTOC High School Football Scoreboard Show when we return. Now at your Jeep and Eagle dealer, a special offer direct from the factory. No charge for air on all Southern Edition two-wheel drive Jeep Cherokees. Get a Jeep Cherokee Sport with air at no extra cost and a price this low. Fully equipped with 190 horses, AM FM stereo, and sport wheels. Get it all for this great low price with air at no extra charge. Hurry, it's a limited time offer good only while vehicles last. See the advantage at your Southeast Jeep and Eagle dealer today. We're having a sale and we want to sale. You can really warm up to our sale prices on quilts and comforters yeah. during the Home Accents sale at Belk. Oh, come on, it's a wonderful sale. Choose from a collection of hand-stitched patchwork quilts, only $89.99 twin. Your style, great style. Or this 
white goose down comforter, only $69.99. Talk about heritage. The 89 Maxima has retained more of its original value than any other car in its class. Same with the 90 Maxima. The 91 Maxima SE was Road & Track's best sedan in its class. Now, if you missed the chance to invest in one of those Maximas, don't miss this one. 190 horsepower, 92 Maxima SE. There's never been a better time to buy or lease a Maxima. Now starting at under $20,000 at your Nissan dealer today. Weeknights at 7 on WTOC. Back on the WTOC High School Football Scoreboard Show. Let's go along and check out the AAA and AA scores as we check the AAA. Camden County, uh, they came up on the short end of uh, the 30-20 score mm. to Camden County. Worth County over Dublin tonight. And it was P Pierce County. Peach County. <laughs> Peach County. It was Peach County. 19 nothing over Thompson. Kendrick all over Burke County tonight in Triple A, 28 to six. In Double A was Mary Persons all by herself beating East Lawrence, and Manchester by six over West Lawrence. And in other Double A scores, it was Mitchell Baker all over Bacon County, mm. and there you see Berrien all over Seminole, 13 to seven. All right, and uh, we already talked about it, the Player of the Year, and we had a tough choice this year. We sure did, but we gave it to someone very deserving who coaches didn't play throughout a lot of their games because mm -hmm. they didn't want to run up the score. Absolutely. I mean, there were great players like uh, Unray Solomon of uh, Appling County, uh, Junior Sneed out of Trutland County. Uh, Willie Sapp of uh, Portal. Portal. He had mm -hmm. over 1,600 yards rushing this year. Yeah, a lot of great players. I know we've forgotten a, a lot of them. <laughs> But our choice, as we announced on Wednesday, was Leroy Lipsy of Statesboro. Yeah, I remember the times in August. It was real hot, and uh, a lot of guys would have quit and hung it up, and some did. And these boys stuck with it. And uh, I think any kind of recognition they get now, they certainly deserve it. And some of that recognition has arrived as Leroy Lipsy, fullback for the Blue Devils, named the WTOC Hardy's Piggly Wiggly Player of the Year for 1991. Lipsy rushed for 956 yards, but he did it averaging 6.7 yards per carry. He led the area in scoring with 25 touchdowns, 22 of those coming on the ground. He has blazing speed for a fullback with 4.43 speed in the 40. And last Friday night against Effingham County, he scored both touchdowns in a 14-13 victory. And the winning touchdown, touchdown came on a play they made up at halftime? Yeah, I mean, the pass was made up like during halftime, and uh, you know, uh, you don't ever think it's gonna work, but when you get out there and execute like we did, and with a great pass from, from Todd Stewart, it really worked well, and uh, I really feel great about that. Leroy, was that the highlight of the season? Well, uh, I'm not gonna say it's the highlight, but because the 98 yard that I ran was a real um, thrill to me. As great an athlete as Leroy is. Maybe his real value is in his leadership. I think you're right. He's not only a really great athlete and uh, plays hard, particularly on Friday nights, but I think uh, his unselfish attitude has been great because there have been a lot of times that we could have left Leroy in the football game. And he may have had three or 400 yards rushing and even more touchdowns, but when we've asked him to come out so other boys can play, he's never griped or complained about that. And um, I think that's the epitome of this type of senior class we've had. The whole group has been uh, team-oriented and uh, has provided great leadership for us. With that kind of leadership ability, the future looks bright for Leroy Lipsy. What does he plan to do next year? I really want to go to college and play college football and, uh, you know, uh, learn a trade, uh, try to get a nice job when I come out of college. And really, I want to be a successful person, but, you know, it's just what the future holds for me. And the way he works and the way he plays, you know he's going to be a success. That's right. We should say right now, Athletes work on that SAT score. A yes. number of the big players have already passed, like Ben Wilson of Beach. James Mobley has passed his. Mm -hmm. Leroy Ellipsy is about to take his, and let's hope he can pass that. But really work on your academics before you hit the football field. All right, we still have more on the High School Football Scoreboard Show in just a moment.
Think of these greenback stands from Piggly Wiggly as Santa's helpers. Because if you save them, they can get you great deals on Christmas presents like the Miro Vegetable and Rice Steamer. Only three and a quarter books of greenback stamps. And think of these greenback stamps as incredible cash saver specials on groceries like Piggly Wiggly Grade A Large Eggs, nine cents with one cash saver. Or Donald Duck Orange Juice, only nine cents with two cash savers. Greenback stamps from Piggly Wiggly as Santa's helpers? Why not? They're little, they're red and green. It could work. Hmm, Hardy's 99 cent breakfast, huh? Ooh, made from scratch biscuit with sausage. That's the one I want. Wait a second. The pancakes look good, too. Hold it. The biscuits and gravy, I didn't see those. Or, or hot cinnamon raisin biscuits. Ooh, sausage, 99. Wait, go back. Can I help you? With all this at 99 cents, the only easy choice is where to go. Oh, no. Raisin oat bran muffin and blueberry muffin, only 99 cents also. <laughs> 99 cent breakfast every day. Only Hardy's. Sparky. Look at this. You still look sad. The only one with the unexpected twist of Lyman. Hopes your holiday has a little unexpected smile. Now at your Jeep and Eagle dealer, a special offer direct from the factory. No charge for air on all Southern Edition two-wheel drive Jeep Cherokees. Get a Jeep Cherokee Sport with air at no extra cost and a price this low. Fully equipped with 190 horses, AM FM stereo, and sport wheels. Get it all for this great low price with air at no extra charge. Hurry, it's a limited time offer good only while vehicles last. See the advantage at your Southeast Jeep and Eagle dealer today. And as we do every week on this show, Mitch Glicken talks with Eric Russell, who looks at the college football weekend off the top of his head. Off the top of my head with Eric Russell, brought to you by your Southeast Georgia Chevrolet Geo dealers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another week of Off the Top of My Head. Mitch Glicken along with legendary coach Eric Russell at a legendary spot, beautiful Eagle Creek. Mitch, we need this site. Uh because we're fixing to come up with a perfect week. We didn't do all that well last week, and we're still looking for that 100% uh, uh, pick em spot, and this might be it. And the mystic, magic waters of beautiful Eagle Creek are here to clear the head and help the picks this week. All right, last week, Irk was 7-3 and three on the week, and we'll see who he picks to win this week right after this. Your Southeast Georgia Chevrolet Geo dealers will treat you right. Okay, there's more power right here than you ever need anywhere. Looks good. You can't beat the truck. The trucks you can depend on. 92 Chevy full-size pickups. Total savings up to $3,400. Brand new 92 S10 pickups with the Tahoe package. Just 10 209 Chevy trucks are aerodynamic, just like me. Welcome back to beautiful Eagle Creek, and Eric, let's get right at it. There's no bigger game for Georgia Southern than this weekend. This is, uh, this is it. We've got to win. We've got to win pretty good, and we've got to help get some help from those uh, teams that are ranked ahead of us. We've got to pull for some of those teams to lose, and I hate to do it that way, but I'm going to pull like crazy for about three of those teams <laughs> ranked ahead of us to lose, and, and if they do, and if we win, we'll make the playoff. What's your gut feeling on this, Herc? Four losses, will they get in? Yeah, I think so. I think they've got to consider our schedule, our past history, and if it comes down to a judgment between Georgia Southern and, and somebody that hasn't been as successful, I think Georgia Southern should get the nod, don't you? I, I, I have to agree with that, and I think they're going to squeak into the playoffs and look out everyone else in 1AA. Savannah State closed out a pretty successful season last week with a big win over Miles College. You know, I picked 58 to 6 and it was 50 to 13, but I want to congratulate Coach Davis and uh, the Savannah State squad for a great year. Irk, one of the biggest games of the year in South Carolina is when Clemson invades and they're going to take on the Gamecocks. That's always a tough game. Uh, that's their interstate rivalry. Uh, 
uh, Clemson goes to South Carolina, and I have a feeling that that's going to be really close. I'm not going to pick uh, that game as my upset special, but I'm going to pick Clemson in a close game. Another big one has Virginia Tech at Virginia. That's going to be a tough one. Well, it always is. That's their uh, interstate rivalry. Uh, Virginia's coming on strong. I think they will they'll win in a close game from Virginia Tech. Another rivalry, North Carolina and Duke. That's tough. I'd sure like to see Barry Wilson and the Blue Devils win that game. And I would pick them, except this is from the head, not the heart. And North Carolina will find a way to win. Okay, Eric, what about some of the best of the rest this week? We've got uh, North Carolina State will beat Maryland. Tennessee uh, goes to Kentucky. Tennessee will win. Mississippi State at home will beat Ole Miss, and that might be a real close ball game. LSU should beat Tulane easily. Michigan will beat Ohio State, and that won't be too easy. And Miami will beat Boston College, and that should be pretty easy. And Arizona State, in a close game, will beat Arizona. So far in the season, the head finds himself with 101 wins, 38 losses, and three ties. Well, our head is above water, <laughs> but uh, that's not as good as it's going to be. I, I feel like we've got 11 winners this week. Let's hope so. All right, we'll see if the coach can be perfect on next week. Off the top of my head with Eric Russell, brought to you by your Southeast Georgia Chevrolet Geo dealers. Well, that's it for another season on the High School Football Scoreboard Show. We want to thank all the crew who has helped us all year long. Millions of them. Done such great work, and we thank you very much. And everybody's left the stadium. For Mitch Glicken, I'm Rick Snow. So long, everyone. See you next year.